Greetings, viewers. We have a brand new pen that just hit the market from Diplomat, which is a German pen company. This is the Diplomat Aero Flame. Now, the Diplomat Aero has been on the market for a few years. So this is a typical Diplomat Aero that's been on the market for quite some time. They have different color finishes that come and go. They are typically made of adenized aluminum. Uh, this particular one is obviously an orange colored uh, pen. Um, this one is the same form factor pen, exactly same size and shape, but it is made out of steel, and as you can see, it is steel that has been torch flamed. For those, for those of you who are not familiar with this process, um, there are a few companies that make pens like this. Monte Grappa, most notably, came out with one a couple of years ago that uh, uses this uh, technique. So what it is, it's sort of unfinished steel that is then torched with a flame, to produce this multi-colored um, uh, effect, um, and so um, it's it's a much heavier pen because this one, like I said, is made of steel versus this one that's aluminum. So the aluminum um, Diplomat Arrow typically weighs 42 grams. This one is much heavier, 70 grams, because it's it's just a big hunk of steel basically. But uh, you do get this really really pretty and very unique torch flamed effect and as a consequence of that this no t no two of these are quite exactly the same because this is done um, by hand by torching um, the pen there's also a considerable price difference so the aluminum arrow typically goes for about 160 US dollars or so this one costs a hundred dollars more um, again there's a much more of a hand uh, made component to this pen as well other than the material um, uh, that the body and the cap are made out of, and uh, uh, the fact that this is you know has the hand flamed effect, the pens are essentially the same. The um, writing experience, though, is quite a bit different because of the weight. So this pen is actually at 42 grams. I wouldn't exactly call it a featherweight pen, but it is you know you don't feel this as being a particularly hefty pen. This pen has significant heft to it. So if you like that you're going to like um, this pen. So let's um, focus on this pen for a bit. Um, it does not have a cap band, but around the rim of the cap, it says diplomat in all uppercase letters and Germany in all lowercase um, letters. Um, the top has the typical diplomat logo on the top finial, and the bottom finial comes to sort of this finished uh, point. The body like I said, it has this flamed effect and has these very, very deep, deep ridges that um, just look, I personally think, look great. They look great on the aluminum version. I think they even look better in this steel flamed version. They look really, really, really good. It has the identical clip. So the clip, it has the same, um, I'm guessing, aluminum clip as the uh, aluminum arrow. Maybe would have been nice if they could have done something special for this version with this, but it is the exact same clip. It's a Fairly standard clip, um, functional, very functional. It is a uh, pull to uncap pen. It does post, uh, it posts well. The, the cap is lined, so there's a plastic liner in the cap. Um, that both facilitates keeping the nib uh, 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 fresh as well as so you don't mar the finish when you're posting. And it posts very, very solidly. I like to post my pens. I do post. Uh, this one, I post all the other ones. I think it's okay unposted. It's just about long enough that you could use it unposted. Um, and again, this is a heavy pen, so I would understand if you didn't want to post this because you're talking now a good amount of a good amount of heft um, uh, in your hand when you when you have this uh, when you have this pen um, posted. Uh, the section is nice and long and tapered. So, and this this drop off here is really not it's very kind of smooth and not sharp or anything so you you know but you have a lot of different places on this section you can grip it with it is pretty pretty nice there is a little indentation here at the end presumably for the snap cap talking about snap cap these diplomat arrows have perhaps one of the most satisfying snaps of any uh snap top pen that i have i mean they really are just great the um the steel one, I think, has a slightly even more significantly loud snap than the aluminum one does. 
but they're both really, really quite nice and just very, very uh, satisfying, uh, satisfying uh, sound. Um, the nib itself is a steel nib. It says Diplomat since 1922 and an M4 medium, and it has the Diplomat sort of floral slash ink drop logo. Um, the feed is sort of an uninspiring plastic feed. The nib is a fairly substantial number six sized nib. So as you can see here, it is compared with the nib on the Pilot Metropolitan. As you can see, it is quite, quite a bit bigger. It is a cartridge converter pen, and a cartridge is included. Um, you can't see it here because it's inked, but it actually does say Diplomat on the side of the converter. Um, one thing I think they really missed the boat on with this nib is they should have had a flamed steel nib. There are flame steel nibs. I've seen them. Other manufacturers offer them. That would have been a perfect, perfect complement to this pen. So I think they did miss the boat on not having the nib be a flame steel nib to match the rest of the pen. That, 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 that's, that's a little bit of a miss there. But, um, but other than that, the look of this pen overall is really, really quite spectacular. I'm not 100% confident that the photography here is going to properly do it justice, but it is just really, really pretty looking. Just looks great. Um, and uh, really kind of, um, uh, I think it really accomplishes what they set out to do with a, a pen like this. Let's talk about the packaging for just a minute, because the packaging on this pen is actually quite nice. I'm going to zoom the camera out just a little bit. Um, so it comes in what at first looks like this ordinary cardboard box that just says Diplomat. When you open it up, what you have is an inner box, and this is metal. This is like, I think, aluminum or steel or something. This is metal. And that's sort of, it's sort of just a, uh, a three-sided uh, metal sleeve that slides off the top. And then you have this sort of uh, paper liner, this nice little bed for the uh, pen to rest in. And underneath, you have your paperwork and a couple of short standard international cartridges if you decide to go that route instead of the uh, converter. But it is really quite, quite nice um, packaging uh, of this uh, pen. and Almost a little bit overkill with this metal here. Um, uh, it is quite, quite, uh, quite nice. Um, well, I think that um, might fairly well cover uh, this uh, this pen again. I'm just uh, very very pleased with uh, this finish. The way it turned out, the sort of flame steel look looks really really good. Um, and it's a nice heavy heavy steel pen. If you're looking for something like that, you're um, you're in for a treat. Oh, one thing we didn't talk about was sizing. So obviously it's the same size as a uh, as all the other Diplomat uh, Aero pens. Um, here it is compared to a Long Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see it's it's pretty much in the ballpark um, uh, size-wise of, uh, of, of these guys. So it's kind of a standard length pen. A bit girthier at its most girthiest. I mean, keep in mind, this is a pen that tapers quite severely, right? So the ends are quite narrow, and then it gets quite wide, actually, in its midsection there. So it's definitely wider than either of these pens at its widest point. Um, that, I think, might just about cover all the external features of this um, uh, pen. Let's, um, let's talk a little bit about how this pen writes. Okay, folks, so this pen is a Diplomat arrow. And um, this has a medium steel nib. Now, this medium steel nib is a bit on the fine side for medium. Just to give you some contrast, here's the uh, other Diplomat Arrow that I have. And this one's in a broad. And you see this, this is, I think 
a very big jump between the medium and the broad. So this to me looks like more than one size in jump, uh, size jump, just uh, just off the top of my head. So it's a, I think the medium is a tiny bit fine for medium, but you know I'm not really going to quibble. Uh, German nibs, you know, it's a little surprising to me because German nibs do tend to run a bit on the wider side, but apparently not these. But in any case, this is a nice smooth pen with a good flow. Um, I would say it's a probably. Uh, pretty wet. I'd say it's maybe slightly above average in wetness, but uh, flows quite nicely. Um, and I like it uh, quite a bit. And uh, I'm very, very pleased with, uh, with uh, how this writes uh, and its comfort, etc. It's comfortable in the hand. You got a lot of nice writing positions. It is a heavy pen, like I said. But boy, doesn't that look great? That that flamed steel just looks just looks really really good. Um, and uh, I don't have a lot more to say about this pen. I just think it's a really really nice pen. I think they're going to sell a lot of these. I know this is a brand new pen just hit the market, but I'm going to predict that this this is this one's going to do well because I just think it's it's it just looks so so nice. Um, well, I think that's about all we really have to say about this particular pen. Let's talk about this ink now for just a minute. Okay, this ink is Monteverde. Cherry Danish. And this um, is uh, a cherry red. I guess it's designed to look like cooked cherries, and that's kind of exactly what it looks like. This is part of the Monteverde Sweet Life line. So this is a line of inks from Monteverde after different pastries and desserts. So we can see on the side of the box here, they have birthday cake, blue velvet cake, key lime pie, mango mousse, blueberry muffin, strawberry shortcake, cherry danish, which is this one, chocolate pudding, iced cookies, and pumpkin cake. So I'm definitely going to want to explore some of these other ones. This is my first one from this product line. Um, uh, I've generally been very pleased with Monteverde inks lately. I think they really upped their game with all the different inks. They have a huge selection. They're priced very well, and um, they seem to all work quite, quite nice. I haven't had any issues or difficulties with them, and I've generally been very pleased with the Monteverde inks, and this one is no exception. I think it looks quite, quite uh, nice. Uh, obviously, red inks are not the most practical inks for every situation. You can't, you know, maybe some office situations, they're not appropriate, etc. But I do use them, and I will definitely be adding this one to the red inks that I use, because I, I really do, do like it uh, quite a bit. Um, so that's what this ink looks like on this um, uh, Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what it looks like on Tomoe River paper. Okay, folks, so again, what we have here is Monteverde. Cherry Danish. And um, this is on Tomoe River paper. And um, again, very, very pretty color. I definitely like it. Um, I definitely like it uh, quite a bit. Um, it goes on, it seems to me, as a very, very bright red. And then once it dries, which is just takes a few seconds, it kind of settles down into more of that sort of cooked cherry color, which is slightly more muted and a tiny bit more brownish than it originally goes on at. So um, um, I, I, think it's a, I think it's an attractive ink. And... Um, it definitely will be something I'm going to be using going uh, going forward. Um, I think that might just about do it for this episode. Um, again, really super nice pen, just just beautiful, and um, I hope you enjoyed viewing this as much as I did making it. Um, as always. If you're not a subscriber, I would encourage you to please become one. Please keep those thumbs up coming. Please leave a comment or two or three. And as always, 
Until next time, have a great day. Bye-bye.